I just wanted to do a really quick video about keeping track of inventory pricing. So, okay, so I've done a video with a spreadsheet where I gave you guys access to a Google document spreadsheet where you can keep track of your profits on eBay uh, for each individual sale. Since I've done that video a few months ago, a lot of you guys have been asking for a spreadsheet keeping track of inventory. Well, I haven't put one out because I don't do an inventory spreadsheet. Yup, secrets out. Look, I don't do an inventory spreadsheet because I simply don't have the time. If I'm buying over a hundred items per week, there is no way that I have the time to sit down to a spreadsheet and record each individual item and how much it costs me. There's just, there's no way. I would need to hire an assistant just to do that for me. I would either need to do that or add another day to the week. And we all know that that's not going to happen. So being realistic with the idea of buying things and sitting down at the computer and typing out each individual item and how much it costs out of pocket, that's just, it's not going to happen. You know, I can't sit there and write down Levi's jeans, size 12. I paid a dollar 80. Uh, Calvin Klein jeans, size 10, paid $2. There's no way. And especially with going to Goodwill Outlet, that's really not going to happen. You know, I'm not going to weigh into each, each individual item and say, okay, this shirt cost me approximately 20 cents. This jacket cost me approximately $2 and 74 cents. Come on now. So, I mean, if you only work with five items a week, maybe that will work for you. Five, 10, 20. But if you're doing over a hundred items a week like I am, there's no way to keep track of all of that by yourself with listing and everything else that comes along with it. So I'm just going to tell you what I do to remember more or less how much I paid for everything. First thing that I do is I average costs out across the board for things that come from the bins or Goodwill outlet, whatever you want to call it. You know, if I'm paying 99 cents per pound and I brought home 200 pounds, then I'll count up how many pieces I got out of this 200 pounds and divide that by the amount that I paid. And that will give me an average price per piece. So, you know, whether something weighs three pounds or a half pound, it, there's a strict dollar amount. You know, it averages 97 cents for each individual item, regardless of how much it weighs. That makes it easy peasy lemon squeezy when you're going to do factor in your pricing. You know, okay, I paid 97 for, cents for this shirt, 97 cents for this coat. You know that. Um, now, I do have a fairly decent memory. So I kind of know by looking at something around about which trip to the bins I got that item on. Now, whenever I have gone to the bins, which has only been three times now, um, my average cost per item does not vary that much. It rounds about 10 cents. The first time I went, my average cost per piece was 88 cents. And then the second time I went, it was 93 cents. And then the third time I went, it was 97 cents. So it was a nine cent spread across those three times. So if worse come to worst, if I can't remember exactly which trip I got something on, I'll just choose the higher of the three just to be safe. And you know, so if I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure if I got this on the first trip, the second trip, the third trip, I'll just go ahead and pick 97 cents because that covers me. It was the highest one. Um, I also kind of know off the top of my head which items I got from the bins because, um, there are certain things that I will get in my local retail that I won't either won't find at the bins or I'll see a certain item that I get at the bins and I wouldn't have gotten it uh, buying by the piece. You know, for instance, like Levi's, the smaller sizes of Levi's. Um, I just know myself and I know that if I'm going to a Goodwill retail that I would not pay $2, you know, my cost, $2, uh, for, you know, size five Levi's because 
I will expect that I'm gonna have to take a lower best offer because it's harder to move smaller sizes on eBay and there's so many of that brand. So if I have a size five Levi's, chances are I got it at the bins because I got it less. I didn't just pick it out by piece at the uh, Goodwill retail. So I have that kind of stuff off the top of my head. Same thing with like men's Lee jeans um, or women's Lee jeans. Usually I won't buy Lee jeans by piece at my Goodwill retail. I'll pick those up at the bins where I can get them for a less cost. So I kind of do all of that off the top of my head. And then if I'm not exactly sure, I'll just say two bucks because whenever I go to my Goodwill retail and I buy things 50% off, I always spend $2. That's just, it's what I spent. It's $2 when I get jeans 50% off. It's $2 when I get tops 50% off. You know, t-shirts are always a dollar 50% off. So I just know what that cost is gonna be. So if I'm looking at something and I'm kind of like, I can't remember if I got this at the bins or not. I'll just pick the higher option just to cover myself. So if I'm not sure if I got that pair of jeans at the bins or if I paid retail for it, I'll just go with the $2 retail cost out of pocket just to make sure that I'm not overshooting what I actually paid. So that part is strictly done by memory. The other things that I do for memory are the retail arbitrage items that I know I've only paid a dollar for. There are certain items that I have listed I know I only paid a dollar because they are consistent moving products for me. You know, I consistently replenish my stock, I consistently list them, I just know that they were a dollar. That's, I mean, I just know. I don't have to write that down. That's just, that's all up here. So. Um, the only items that I do keep track of are the items that I will get at a garage sale or retail arbitrage items that are for varying costs. Um, those I will keep track of, but I still don't use a spreadsheet. I am still pretty old school. I just use a notebook. That's it. And every day, I will, um, if I get multiple items, I'll use a whole page for a day. Um, or I, if I just get one or two items, I'll just like put a big fat line right in the middle of the page. And I'll just do like one day at the top, another day, another day. Um, so when, like if I were to go to Walmart and get retail arbitrage, I would just of course save the receipt. You always save the receipt. And then I would just come home and I would just say, you know, on March, you know, I'd just sit here and I would have my receipt next to me and I would say, okay, you know, March 3rd, 2017, I bought Mario sheets for $13. And then I also bought a Kansas City Royals koozie for 70 cents. And I bought five of them, you know, that kind of thing. And then I have them in my notebook. Um, should I put them in a spreadsheet to find them faster? Sure. But the thing of it is, is the notebook is working for me probably just because I'm not buying such a high quantity of those kind of items. It's really easy for me just to flip through and find it in just a regular notebook. Um, if I was buying a really large quantity of items, then I would put them in a spreadsheet. And to be completely honest, I probably should since I've been dabbling more in um, in Amazon sales. So I probably should go ahead and move it to a spreadsheet. But up until now, I've just been using a notebook. It works for me. I'm pretty old school that way. Um, but then for things like garage sales or um, whenever I meet up with a local coupon lady to buy some retail arbitrage items, that is when I just use regular old school cash receipt books and these work perfectly fine these are just so that I can remember how much I paid when I paid I will literally just be like okay well I went to a garage sale on uh, March 3rd we'll just keep using this and I spent five dollars on a pair of I don't I don't forget boots we'll just say boots and then there'll be more hobnob to it so I will just write a receipt like this and I will just tear it off and I will put it in my with all of my receipts for the purchases that I've made and then at the end of the day or at the end of the week whenever I want to keep track of everything I will just put this dollar amount and this item 
in my notebook or spreadsheet, whichever one. Um, and then what item do, or not what item, but what content do I include in the notebook or in the spreadsheet that I will someday do? Uh, not a whole lot of detail. I will put the date, I will put the dollar amount, and I will put the item. That's it. That's really all you need to know. And maybe a quantity, if there was multiple quantity, you know, so if those Mario Kart sheets that I got from Walmart for $13, if I got three of them, I'll put a quantity of three. That way I'll know, and then maybe a total purchase price. But realistically, you don't need to know the total that you spent in the spreadsheet. You just basically need it for reference when you're doing your book work, when you've made a sale, and you need to know your profit, just like off the top of your head. So, um... But yeah, high tech stuff. But I think that the most valuable tool to knowing how much cost you put in something is having a cap in your head. You know, for me, I have a certain cap. I know, bottom line, I don't ever spend more than $4 on a pair of jeans. I never spend more than $4 on a pair of jeans. And so, if I just can't remember, oh, I can't remember if I got these jeans at the bins. I can't remember if I got these jeans 50% off or if I got these jeans, you know, uh, if I paid full price for them because maybe they were BKEs, maybe they were a really good brand. And I can't remember if I actually paid full price for them, if I paid half price for them or if I got them at the bins. I always just put that cap um, as my product cost because I'll know that I can't go wrong with that. I'll know, okay, well, there's no way I spent more than $4, so I'm just going to pick $4 if I can't remember. That way you're safe. Um, you know, and it's going to, I can already tell I'm going to get some, I'm going to get some flack for this because when you're doing your, your books come tax time, you need your exact numbers. I get it, I get it, I get it. But fact of the matter is, if you're saving all of your receipts, if you've got all of your purchase receipts, if you've got, you know, these these little slips from when you went to garage sales or things like that, if you've got that, then you're gonna know what your total overall profit is that you need to pay taxes on. So this is mainly just keeping track for your own, for your own knowledge. You know, if you're using that spreadsheet that I provided, or if you wanna get an idea of the kind of profit margins that you have, and you just need to know the cost of that individual item, there's, I really don't see a reason to keep a spreadsheet of each individual item and how much you paid for it. To me, it just sounds too time consuming. You know, if you have a hundred items that you get in a week, sitting down to a spreadsheet and putting in Levi's jeans, size 15, price $1.80. It just, it seems like a waste of time. It seems like a waste of time. So, that's how I do it. Um, how do you do it? Leave it in the comments. Let me know how you do it. Let me know if there's a more efficient way than just, you know, writing in a hundred items a week, however many you have. And again, I say maybe keeping track of each individual item. If you're only doing, you know, 20 items a week or something, maybe that could work for you. Uh, but this is what I've been doing. I do rely a lot on my memory. Um, but then again, I do have certain caps in my brain. So I know, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm sometimes guessing, but I'm not really guessing because I always take the higher number. That way, if anything, maybe I made a little bit more profit and I just didn't know it. And come tax time, I have all of the receipts and everything to keep me covered. So that's just when I'm keeping track of each individual item just for my benefit. So that's what I do. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know. Also, let me know if you found it helpful or if you have any little tidbits or uh, knowledge that you can share. Um, I just felt like really doing this video because a lot of you guys have asked me for a spreadsheet about keeping track of inventory. And you know, the truth is I just don't do one. It's just way too time consuming. So this is what I do instead. So anyways, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. <laughs> Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you with my next video. Bye.